Lord, we just come before you. And Lord, we bow our hearts and we open our minds to the fact that you are the Holy One. You are the Savior. You are the Redeemer. You are the provider. You are the protector. You are the healer. You are our everything. Father, we just give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen? Amen. How many know the Lord is good? All right. All the time. Hallelujah. 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 Lord is good. He's good. I'm out of here. This time we're going to let the kids go to their time together in the back. Sunday school teachers. Amen. Uh, listen, real quick, Sunday school teachers, get with Becky so we can get dates arranged for the month of August. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Here they go. I'm uh, so glad that God's given folks in the church a desire to serve our children. Amen. I'm so glad of that. I just feel blessed beyond, beyond measure of the abundance and the presence and the love and the glory of what he wants to do. Right. Amen. That's a wonderful one. Yeah. Talking about testimonies. Yeah. I figure I had 45 minutes. I wasn't going to keep my mouth shut until that time. Great grandma's going to go back with me. So good. Um, I want to let you know that we took a trip, and as most of you know, we just got back this past week. And when we left, I was told the car was in wonderful running shape, no problems, nothing. And he said, except the back tire, have a little bit of problem, but there, you can wait till next spring to take care of that. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, good. So I went through the trip thinking everything was all right. <clears throat> How many of you know that the wisdom of God is much above the wisdom that you have? Because if you know some facts, you would freak out. <laughs> but God knows and He wants to protect you anyway. And we got all through our trip, got back safely, thought it was a wonderful trip. We had a wonderful trip, you know explain some things as I minister this morning, but um, we got back and Tuesday morning I went out to the car and one of the rear end, rear tires was flat. So I took a compressor that we had in the garage, I filled it up and I said, well, I'm going to have to go get the nail, quote unquote, out of the tire. So I went and to it and long story short I got to the place where I was going to get the tire fixed and the guy pumps up and he said you're driving on these tires and I said yeah I come to find out both of the rear tires had giant what they call bulges on the inside of the rear tire that could have blown out at any time and should have blown up. The guy said basically that these tires should have never held air, that they should have blown out when you got up to speed on the highway. I thank God that he protected hey, us thank God, yeah. all through that and allowed me to get back home where I could get the problem fixed and the right, tires God. done, number one. And number two, I thank God that I was not aware of the situation because yes. I would have freaked out. Yes. I mean, you know, you're you're a thousand miles away yeah. from home and you all of a sudden you you have problems like that. It, it just ain't fun. 
So I, I, I thank just the Lord. thank the Lord that He was with us all the way. We had a wonderful time. God moved uh, in my life, and, and uh, I had an opportunity to speak with people that gave me impetus of uh, what God wants to do this morning. And I'm having old notes fly all over the place here. Excuse me here for just a minute. I got back. Here's what God's doing. God's teaching me not to worry about the small things. And to start just living in the big things. I got back and First thing I was told this past week is, oh, one of the air conditioners in the church is at work, and the other one is just barely working. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is all I need, you know? And the Lord said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. So God, in His loving and in His mercy, has allowed me to have some peace. And here's the key, folks. And this is what I want to say to you. If you let God handle your situations, peace will come. If you take a control of it yourself and begin to hold on to yourself, you'll never have peace from God. God is a God of peace. He's a God of love. He's a God of glory. And that's so, so much a thought that we need to have prevail within our lives and within our spirits. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. And by the way, we we still need to pray for Bruce and we need to pray for Donna, even though Donna came in this morning. Uh, yeah, that, that's pleasant. But we also need to pray for Kathy. Kathy has gotten very ill. And uh, we need to pray for her that she's coming out of it now. Uh, She's had some type of bug and they can't explain what it is. Flu like symptoms, we don't know what it is. And Tim also is very sick this morning. So if you would pray for, for those folks too, remember them in prayer as you do that. Um, Tim was finally coming to play drums for you this morning. And he got up and the first thing that he did was put it right to the bathroom and went right back to bed. So he is not. A, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 12. I picked this scripture this morning because, not, number one, it's, and most of you that know me very well know that 1 John is one of my most favorite books of the Bible. But I also picked it in lieu of current events and, and what God was showing me as I traveled around these past two weeks. Uh, if you didn't know, I went through Kentucky, Ohio, and Michigan, and Illinois. We had a lot of time to speak with a lot of folks. And this is what came out of it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son, the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Loving one another and abiding in Christ. As I Went through traveling, there were a lot of things that were happening. And a lot of current events, most of you know about the, the shooting uh, out in South Carolina. Most of you know about the Confederate flag deal and all that kind of stuff. Most of you know of all these things that were going around in the news. 
And as we traveled and I was listening to the news, I heard one statement. And it bothered me. Have you ever heard a statement that just grieved you? Yep. Here it is. Don't let the cause die. Don't let the cause die. And the cause could have been anything. What I heard it about was the Confederate flag. Don't let the cause die. But the cause was not the issue. The issue was a lack of love and teaching us to love one another. The issue was a point black attack by Satan on the church of God and his ministry that he was doing through people out in South Carolina. But don't let the cause die. How many times in the church do we have a cause instead of a relationship. Yes. How many times in the church do we come looking for a certain thing yes. instead of the presence of God? Right. God bless me. Who oh, bless me? Who oh, bless me? And we don't even understand that He wants to more than you want to be blessed, but He wants you to come into the right relationship with Him. To abide in Him. A cause. You ready? A cause will circumvent the reality. If you are standing here or sitting here this morning in the church and you are looking for a cause, you are circumventing the reality of what Jesus wants to do in you. It was so interesting as we went through Louisville. I got to take a trolley, trolley lot. I'll get it right. Trolley lot ride through Louisville for 75 minutes. One of the biggest stops. You know where it was? Right down by the river. They stopped the trolley, and he says, "This is the south." And he said it earlier. And then he he said. You look over there to your right, across the river, that's the north. And I thought to myself, you're trying to keep a cause of separation alive when these United States were mended years ago. Let's stop separation and start relationship oh, and as I began to think about that trolley the the Lord began to deal with me about first John chapter 4 and loving us and how he loves us if we love one another God abides in us see the truth is revealed to us in the word how many of you know that? The truth is always will always be revealed in His Word. Always. No, there's no difference. But it's, it's also revealed on the cross. Yes. Jesus loved you and I enough to die for you. He loved you and I enough to come from a cushy position. Being the son of God has got to be a cushy position. How many of you know what I'm saying? Come down here and deal with a bunch of misfits, antagonists, depressing people. And then come and say, okay, for you misfits, depressing, agonizing and irritating people I'm going to die for you because I love you so that you can have eternal life and you can have relationship with me yeah. I want to bridge
the gulf. I wanted to stand up in that trolley ride and say, I want to bridge the gulf between the north and the south. There is no north, there is no south. We are all one. But the Lord began to speak to me and say this, there is no other thing inside the relationship of the church and the relationship of Christ except that we are one in Him. Yeah. We abide in Him. Yeah. Let us never forget that. See, God is love is not simply a doctrine in the Bible. It's an eternal fact clearly dis dis demonstrated at Calvary. It's an eternal fact. The fact is that Jesus died for you. What are you going to do about it? Yes. The fact is that Jesus rose for you. What are you going to do about it? The fact is, the Holy Spirit is here for you. What are you going to do about it? All right. The fact is a fact. Yes. And you can't change facts. God has said something to us. And God has done something for us. Yes. Now it's time for us to do something about it. Yes. All this preparation brings us to a third fact. That God has done something in us. Greater is He that is in you. All right. Come on. You're not walking beside Jesus. He's walking in you this morning. He's living in you this morning. What kind of Jesus are you to the world? Yes. We're not merely students reading a book. Oh, well, the Bible says, and we study this as a, a textbook. You study it all as a textbook all you want, but if you don't find the relationship in it, you miss the whole thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying. You're not a spectator watching a deeply moving event. See, another thing that was going on while I was gone was the World Cup, the Women's World Cup. Those people are nuts! <laughs> deeply moving! Woo! 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 And they just kick the ball a different way. And they get all excited. No goals scored, nothing. I, I couldn't understand that. You know what? If I'm going to go to something, I want to see a goal score. I want to see some action. And they just kicked it the other way. And you watch the crowd. Oh! And I begin to think. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if the angel. Listen to this. I wonder if the angels up in heaven. Are Christian fans. And I wonder how excited they get. When the Holy Spirit turns you the other way. And you start moving toward him. Wow! My word, the word tells me that the angels rejoice when one comes to him. You got me? That word there, I began to look. You know what that means? That means just turns toward, changes direction. Just like that soccer match. When the people arose and they started to cheer when the ball went the other way. Didn't score a goal. Didn't do anything except change direction. They got up and cheered. How many of you know the angels will tear, begin to cheer when you change direction toward Him? Right. Move and make it in your heart a nature and a wonderful thing to understand that God wants to do something. You're not a spectator. You are a participant in the great drama of God's love. God loved you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten, unique Son that whosoever, whosoever, that's you. You are a whosoever this morning. Based in the love of God. Then I began to go to the 17th verse of this portion of Scripture. 
1 John chapter 4. Love hath been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Let me repeat this. As he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect fear, perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not made, been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Consummation. Consummation. What does it mean to be consumed? I was up in Upper Michigan at a cabin with my cousin that they own. Beautiful place during the day. You don't go outside at night. You know why you don't go outside at night? Coyote. Wolves, mountain lions, bears. Do I need to go on? You go out. If you go out, you better be packing. Because at night, they come out and they take over. The reason why I say all that is one thing that they have to do is one thing that attracts them is garbage. In Upper Michigan. Okay. One thing that will attract bears, wolves, all this kind of stuff is garbage. Why? They're looking for a food source. So I learned how they do things in Upper Michigan. You don't throw anything on the ground. You don't throw anything in any place. You put it all in a little sack and then you take it out and you burn it until it is utterly consumed. There's nothing left but ash. Why? Because there's no food source left. Then you don't have the problems that you would with the bears and the mountain lions and the wolves and the coyotes coming into the place where you're staying. And I thought, man, that is a really neat thing. And then I see this. Consummation of love. See, the key word, the key word is the word perfect or perfected. God wants to perfect in us his love and our love for him. He wants us to be consumed with his love. An Old Testament variation of this is very simply. Moses is wandering along and he runs upon a bush. And the bush is burning, but what? Never consumed. Never. Always seen. Always giving. Like, hey man, that's a little bit different. It never quits. I had the opportunity to go by my Bible college, and I, I was able to see, and, and most of you know, the Friday before we left, some of you do know that our Bible college burned down. I mean, the, the old one that, that we went to. I mean, completely it's a mess. And I had a chance to do that. Even though the building was consumed, listen to me, the people that came out there to minister Jesus were there is still a burning bush at that place. And that burning bush is the people who came to that place to learn how to minister Jesus to a lost and dying world. Why do I say that? I'm going to say that some of the things that you in your life may have been consumed, may, may be in utter ruins, but the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, 
is there and he's right with you. And you may be that burning bush, but you will never be consumed except by consumed by the love of Christ. You may come into fires, but you'll never be burned up. You'll always be protected. We were protected. <coughs> In northern Michigan. But we were aware that there was an enemy present. I mean, you know what I'm saying. We're out there, look for the bear. Look for the bear. Look for the bear. Always keep an eye out for the bear. And you know what? When you look for the bear, and you're aware that the bear might be around, the bear won't attack. Why? Because he's more afraid of you than what you are of him. It's a fact. You look it up. And in fact, you drive a bear away, you don't use a gun, you don't do anything. You know what you use? Pops paint. It's going to be an amazing thing. You use two garbage can lids. That's how you drive a bear away. Bam, 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 bam! And they'll go. That's a black Why bear. Why do I say that? That's a black bear. Who's the bear in your life? It's the enemy trying to come in and consume your food. Yeah. Trying to come in and eat at your table. All right. And God said, beware of the enemy. Come against him. Make provision so that you can overcome him. So that you might be that burning bush that is never consumed. Yeah, I looked at, ooh, Lord have mercy here. You're giving me some illustrations, Lord. All right. And I'm going to use them all up in one message. And he said, that's all right, I got more for you. <laughs> the key word is perfect. God wants to perfect His love in us and our love in Him. The word perfect carries the idea of maturity and completeness. How many ever looked at somebody and told them simply this? Grow up! You're talking to another, Grow up! Stop acting like you're five years old. Grow up. Jesus is saying to us, listen to me. Grow up. Become perfect or perfected. Thank you so much. Perfected. Mature. Mature, become complete. See, a believer is not only to grow in grace and knowledge, 2 Peter 3.18, but he is also to grow in his love for the Father. How many of you know something? The more that you get with the Father, the closer you become. If I go a few days without having relationship and there have been times in my life because of circumstance that I've been a few days where I haven't been in the word I haven't been able to pray you know and, and y'all have that that's life okay that's a fact but you know after those three or four days you just don't feel the presence of God so what you got to do is get yourself and kick yourself in the butt and get yourself back into relationship Get yourself back moving and, and back and, and get the grease, the, the wheels greased. Get the wheels greased. And as I uh, thought about that, that's it. That's it. We should not condemn ourselves for the times that we get away. But what we should do is encourage ourselves always to get back. To get back. 
and understanding that getting back is getting in a relationship. Understand that getting back is allowing Jesus to move within our heart and within our life and to appropriate who he is within us. See, it's easy to fragment the Christian life and become preoccupied with individual pieces of the total picture. It's hard to drive on three wheels. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to drive on three wheels. And I told you what God protected us through as, as we, we came home. It's hard, hard, hard to drive on three wheels. Why? Because you got one dragon. It's much harder to drive on two wheels. You know what I'm saying? What happens when three wheels roll? When you only have one wheel, you spin right around circles, right around circles, and all you do is dig a hole. What am I saying? I'm saying when you emphasize one thing more than another, you become lopsided and you miss it higher. See, one group may emphasize holiness and urge its members to get victory over sin. And that's a good thing. I'm not I'm not downgrading any one of these things, okay? But then you might have another one that emphasizes witnessing and separation from the world. Why can't we emphasize all of the word instead of just one thing? The reason why we only emphasize one thing and we skip the other things, you ready? Is we're circumventing what we really need. I was talking about a scripture this morning. And for so that I, I don't get too specific in anything, I, I'll just be real general. And the question was brought up to me, why doesn't this group of people know about this verse? And I said simply this, they do know. They do know. They just choose to circumvent. How many of you have had verses that God has dealt with you on? And this is good, this is good, this is good. And then you go, whoops. We'll leave that one out. Or we'll deal with it later. God wants some something to happen within your life. See, what he wants us to emphasize is a byproduct of something else. He wants us to emphasize growing love for the Father. Grow in Jesus. Mature Christian love is the great universal need among God's people. How can a believer know that this love for the Father is being perfected? This paragraph of 1 John suggests four evidence. It's number one, confidence. 1 John chapter 4. Let me read this here real quick again. There's no fear in love. A perfect love casts out fear because fear of all torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Perfected. Being perfected means that we have a confidence. Andre Crouch sang a song years ago, I've got confidence. God's going to see me through. Do you have confidence in God that he's going to take care of you in every situation? The second thing about this being perfected, it requires honesty. Be honest with God. Be honest where you're at and get to where you need to be. Quit putting on the airs, as it were. Quit putting on the fritz. Quit putting on the, the facade. Get it right internally. Confidence. Honesty. 
And then comes the third one. Joyful obedience. And I didn't put just the word obedience. I put joyful. Why? Because if you're not being obedient in a joyful manner, you might as well not be obedient at all. I mean, you told the kids to take out the garbage and they took it out and they grumbled all the way to the door. You know? How many of you have had situations in your life and you grumbled all the way to the door? Joyful obedience. See, if you don't do it out of the attitude of joy, you might as well not do it because you really didn't do it out of a correct attitude. Joyful obedience. Finally, the fourth thing comes to perfection, and that's victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Is it? Is victory yours? In real life, are you sitting here and saying, yeah, I've got victory in Jesus? Or are you sitting there thinking, i got problems? Uh-oh, he quit preaching went to meddling, didn't he? That's all right. I'm going to meddle here a minute. Real victory is understanding that God, no matter the situation, will take care of you. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he's watching me. Victory. Well, I got problems. Your problem is that you haven't got confidence that God's going to do it. You haven't been honest, honest, enough, honest enough with God to All tell right. Him that you need Him. I'm telling you the truth this morning. I'm not going to mince any words about it. If you want victory, you better get confidence in what God can do for you. You better be honest with Him and say, I'm not all that I think I am or all the people think I am. I'm just a... Just a human being and I have problems just like everybody else and the third thing is you better start being obedient with joy if you're serving him begrudgingly you might as well not serve him serve him with joy and that will bring hold the victory two brand new words come to John's vocabulary he's never said before book of John and in 1 John it comes up. You, you want to know what they are? Fear and torment. Well if you go back to Genesis you find out that fear is the first evidence of sin. Well what do you mean? Jesus comes or God comes to walk with Adam and Eve and they come, finally come out, they hit themselves, and they come out. We hit ourselves because we were afraid of fear. And they were afraid because sin had captured their life. Torment.
are overbeared by the fact of all the bad news that I've heard here. I just said, okay, Lord, I need help. He wasn't just relaxed. He didn't take care. I said, okay. Take care of it, Lord. Because I came in here Thursday night, and this is what I found. You ready? Listen to this. What a little problem. And if you can't see it, it's bouncing all over the place. And my first thought was, oh, I gotta run right out, I gotta get off of her. And the Lord said, sit down, shut up, and let me take care of it. Y'all are fine this morning, huh? You know, maybe a little bit warmer than what we'd like it, but we're fine. Nobody's, nobody's sweating. If you're, if you're pouring out sweat, we'll get you a hanky. You know, or, Paper towels, you can gag yourself or whatever. <laughs> but, but here, listen to me. It has nothing to do with the presence of God. That's right. How many of those things do you have in your life right now that have nothing to do with the presence of God? God should be, and always will be, first in the land. Don't let things get in the way and torment you and become make you fearful. But God wants to do something like the word boldness means confidence and freedom. It does not mean brave, brazenness or brashness. A believer who experiences perfecting love grows in confidence towards God doesn't make you all-knowing. It doesn't make you arrogant. It actually does the exact opposite. It makes you more humble and desiring to seek Him. When you have a reverential fear and awe of God, tormenting fear, you can't handle it. See, Jesus, and I want to end this, this, this point this morning. Jesus was a son who respected his father. How many know what I'm saying? He respected him right up to the end. The, the one issue of respect that Jesus had for the father was an amazing issue, and it's amazing. Something I'm studying out, you may hear about in the near future. It's simply this. Here, here's the amazing respect. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. That is respect for the Father. See, Jesus knew where he was going. He knew what he was going to go through. He wasn't someone who was cringing like you would cringe before a judge do it sentencing. But he was one that was going really because he knew what was at stake and he knew the ultimate victory that would be. In your life this morning, are there things that are hindering you from total victory in Jesus Christ? Are you sitting on the south side looking over across the river and saying that's the north? Or are you thinking, as I went to Abraham Lincoln's birthplace and met a man, it was a terrible storm. Met a man, so all we had to do was we were all in a wheel together and talk. <clears throat> met a wonderful, wonderful black man. That I can't think of a thing to pass. I need to live for the future. You can't think of a thing to the past. You need to live for the future. I'll always remember that. Always remember that. He was 
Stone sets free. It's free. I get free. We thank you also, Lord, that we know that you're able to work miracles. For some of us sitting here this morning, we need a miracle. We need a new perspective. We need to change direction. We need to let the angels cheer as we come back to you. We need to drop the fear and the torment. We need to drop the things within our life that we're holding so preciously. Say, Jesus, do what with me what you want. Whether it be provision, whether it be healing, whether it be a lack of faith, whether it be anything. Drop that thing of fear. Cause us to begin to walk as a child of God. Cause us to begin to walk like Jesus did. That would say simply, not my will, I let go of the things that I would have. I release them. But thy will be done. Lord, let your will be done within our life. Father, we just give you praise and give you glory for that. Because we know that you're going to do it. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask this question. How many of you are sitting here this morning and you're saying, I'm holding on to problems I need to release? I'm holding on to things I need to release, and I, I've been bound by them, I've been tormented by them, and I need to be set free this morning. If you're here this morning, you can say, that's me. Just raise your hand with the Lord and sit down. I'm holding you. I'm holding you, Father, right now. Lord, let us not be bound. Lord, this is Emancipation Day. This is a day of freedom. Lord, we begin to walk in freedom. We don't look for causes. But Lord, we go right to the root cause. And Lord, that root cause is sometimes that our love has grown cold because we've taken you for granted. Our root cause are attitudes that we have with people. Because we felt we've been wrong. And Father, let us release them. Let us forgive them. And let us move on in the dream. You're here this morning and <coughs> you'd like prayer. You're here this morning and God's dealing with you. You need to be free. I challenge you to make a step of faith and to stand right to your feet right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you. Power. 
you out of the mind. Now break, Lord, those chains. Let her let go of things that are not important. And Lord, let her grab hold of the fact of who you are. And Lord, we just give you glory for that. In the Jesus' name. Break those chains right now. Break them in Jesus' name. Break them in Jesus' name. Set free, Father. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Now, Father, right now, those who are with us that are still carrying around those chains, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we agree together, Lord, that those chains will be broken. Lord, that the fear will be gone. And Lord, right now, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for healing, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it might be in the name of Jesus, we pray healing. Bring healing, bring your power, bring your authority in it, Jesus' name. And break. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Y'all stand with me. There's a thing that you can do. It says, with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. Would you turn to somebody this morning, if you truly mean it, and say, my chains are broken. My chains are broken. My fears are gone. My fears are gone. My torment is defeated. My torment is defeated. And I walk. Now, in a new relationship, in new relationship, I walk in Jesus, in Jesus who abides in, abide in me. Amen.
I've been praying this Lord used me. Yeah. For years I've been praying for him. Yeah. Well, he's been using me all yeah. this time. Yeah, all the time. Uh, I work for the care, and I take care of some elderly people. I have a lady I'm taking care of. She's 100. She'll be 100 years old September 18th. Oh, yeah. And she's so Jewish. Yeah. I'm not praying for her. She's never read the Bible. That's what I'm not going to get the Bible. I gave her a Bible. Um, yesterday, I invited her to a Bible study that another client of mine has in the building, and she's going to go, and she's never read the story of Jesus, and she's going to start reading the story of Jesus. Praise the Lord. He's good. And uh, I've been seeing friends and some other people who are praying over some people. Um, I don't know if y'all know Shauna. She's the Bible. She's really the mind. She's been having some problems, physical and mental. She's been tortured by the devil. Changed her life. And, uh, this morning she's in some pain, but she couldn't tell the truth. And I want y'all to pray for her. So I get sent to me in a prayer request. Pray for Shauna that God will heal her. Pray for 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 her. P